Hello everybody, I'm Gleb and this is my second video about beam management procedures in 5G network. Today we're going to talk about beam refinement, beam correspondence, beam switching procedures. And I want to make very important note here that today we will talk about only intracell management for beam forming. We will talk only about uh, what's going on inside one cell. We will not consider uh, handover cases and interactions between cells. So why we need beam refinement? Beam refinement is very important in 5G. The thing is that uh, after user equipment get access to uh, network, after base station uh, sweeps all SSB beams. After user equipment has established RSC connection, there can be uh, a special need for optimal transmission because uh, changes in the radio environment, because uh, user equipment mobility. So our uh, radio channel may not be so optimal as we desire in order to, to achieve the best possible connection. So uh, this is why we need beam refinement, beam adjustments from base station side and from the user equipment side as well. Uh, so basically in 3GPP you can find that beam refinement divided into two procedures P2 and P3. P2 procedures refers uh, to uh, beam refinement from base station side. So this is base station downlink side. And this is refers to user equipment side P3 or uh, we can say uplink direction. Okay. Um, so um, when we have optimal connection, when we have uh, the right directions from beams in uplink and f uh, beams in downlink direction, when this is connection is optimal, we can say that there is beam correspondence. Beam correspondence uh, may, may be uh, maybe not achieved because different reasons. The first reason we will already mentioned. This is radio environment changes. Radio environment changes. The second reason is uh, why we don't have beam correspondence is the user equipment limitations. Because the user equipment is not so uh, powerful um, and in, in terms of um, uh, baseband uh, ability, in terms of processing, in terms of radio techniques, not so powerful thing. So um, user equipment while performing initial access to network may not have the full opportunity to explore all possible SSB beams with all possible uh, CSI RS narrow beams. So this is why uh, it can be no beam correspondence for this case. So let's uh, write user equipment limitations. The third reason is uh, again related to uh, user equipment side um, especially this is very actual for uh, fr2 bands for millimeter waves is when we have um, different uh, we can have different uh, antenna panels for example here antenna panel for massive mimer and here antenna panel so uh, different antenna panels um, plus user equipment mobility, plus changes in radio environment. And this is why we can have uh, no beam correspondence. So again, uh, UE antenna panels separations. Separation, they can be separately, so this is maybe the reason. 
And of course, all of these reasons, uh, that's why we need to perform beam refinement in order to find the uh, best uh, the best optimal uh, transmission from uplink side and from downlink side. So uh, let's look uh, inside uh, all of these procedures. Let's uh, talk with more details about beam refinement, beam switching and uh, other interesting things. Okay, let's look at my example. Here, 5G base station, G Node B. From this side, user equipment. Uh, let's suppose that base station and user equipment can support massive antenna arrays with a beam forming capability. The first step, of course, this is beam sweeping with initial access. It was um, performed in order to have access to network. This is for idle mode idle mode and of course after that uh, when a user equipment has established RC connection there is data transmission from base station towards user equipment with uh, within narrow beams within a CSI RS beams with data uh, and that data with a special demodulation reference signals and let's suppose that we are talking about the case when CSI RS transmitted within the same SSB uh, wide beam. After that, user equipment may perform optionally, if uh, user equipment support, may perform uplink refinement. Uh, the thing is that um, the last uh, refinement was at the step of beam sweeping and initial access and since that may take some time plus uh, user mobility plus, plus changes in radio environment so if um, user equipment support that procedure it can be done uh, in parallel user equipment uh, measure CSI RS narrow beams and send reports towards G node B, towards 5G base station, about quality of uh, CSI RS uh, channels, about quality of narrow beams. Uh, basically, this is a QCI report. Uh, let's say this is a channel state information report. After that, if um, G node B decide to change uh, uh, to another CSI RS narrow beams transmission. After that, uh, 5G base station can decide perform downlink refinement. Let's suppose that this is refinement within the same SSB wide beam. So, uh, in parallel, user equipment sends SSB measurement reports. Um, that's because uh, user equipment receive SSB uh, blocks, uh, measure it and uh, can send information about neighbor SSB blocks. And uh, send, of course, uh, acknowledges or not acknowledges uh, of HRQ process via PUCCH channel. Base station, uh, based on this information about SSB measurements, base station can decide to switch to another uh, SSB block with, of course, another narrow uh, CSI RS beams. If the quality of uh, another SSB block is better than the certain threshold, RSRQ or uh, RSRP threshold, uh, if so, uh, there is new transmission. There is new transmission on new SSB beam. So this was in old, uh, old beam scheduling. And here new beam and here scheduling on new beam on new beam 
yes and of course after such uh, changes after such switching from base station side user equipment may uh, wants to perform uplink refinement in order to change uh, rx beam in uplink direction this is again optionally if uh, user equipment supports such function but uh, it may be performed okay so what else i would like to say this is uh, one important thing is a uh, quasi collocation concept so what does it mean quasi collocation basically uh, when uh, signals transmitted from two different ports they have different radio properties they have uh, different um, uh, propagation uh, environment i mean it may be in terms of uh, doppler shift uh, doppler spread and so on so in order to make user equipment uh, estimation of uh, quality of signals easier and faster uh, the term quasi-collocation was uh, invented. So what does it mean quasi-collocation? It means that from uh, some antenna ports, we can assume, we can make assumption that uh, radio properties is relatively the same, is basically the same in order to make it easier for uh, user equipment to estimate such uh, channels uh, such reference signals from that port so uh, for example from this case when uh, base station performed downlink refinement within the same ssb block within the same wide beam we can say that such transmission uh, has a quasi collocation so uh, there is no need to inform user equipment about new uh, parameters about new uh, Doppler shift um, measurements and uh, Doppler spread measurements for example and of course if base station perform SSB switching wide beam switching yes of course with different uh, CSI RS uh, in this case user equipment uh, wants to know more about uh, new ports about new antenna transmission ports and uh, this can be provided by uh, PDSCH, PDSCH channel. Uh, such information about quasi collocation uh, parameters can be provided to user equipment to help user equipment to estimate uh, new radio properties from new SSB wide beam block. For example, uh, let's assume that um, here and here, this is two parts of our antenna system. Uh, this is a, a part of antenna that transmit SSB1, SSB1, SSB2. And inside these uh, SSB blocks, we have narrow CSIRS uh, transmission elements that related to CSIRS signals and if uh, we change CSIRS within one SSB block we can change we can say that uh, this is a quasi collocation there is a quasi collocation quasi collocation and if we're talking about changes between that CSI RS and that between different parts of antenna um, system of course this is new uh, radio properties and there is no um, quasi collocation so new properties should be provided via PDSCH to user equipment so as you can see, uh, beam management in 5G networks are very important, are very crucial in order to achieve the best uh, user mobility, in order to uh, gain uh, enhanced mobile broadband cases, ultra reliable low latency communication cases. 
So that's why um, so many attention to beam management procedures. And in my next videos, I will tell you about uh, beam failure recovery, beam failure detection things, and uh, we will talk about uh, sounding reference signal. So uh, stay tuned with IoT Understanding channel. Goodbye.